continue yes 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 we have an update an update that you all wanted to hear so Tory Lanez has finally broken his silence right which I was not necessarily a fan of hearing that news I think he kind of buckled to the pressure of public yeah he buckled to the, the for the for the pressure of the public um obviously people out there calling him out in his name saying that he was gaslighting Megan by mentioning or alluding to some of the things that occurred in the um unfortunate shooting incident that's allegedly to men have happened between Tory Lanez and Megan and her friend Kelsey when they went to Kylie's house that epic time that when they shared that video of them in a swimming pool and um, so far he's kind of remained stum right he's kind of kept his counsel not said a word then he dropped the album of course and kind of aired out a lot of the dirty laundry but again we're not too sure how much of that story is actually true on the album whether or not it was creative license expression whatever it may be we still haven't heard his side even though Megan has come out countless times with pictures of her feet uh, live Instagram live um, comments on Twitter other comments on other live streams basically telling us we know on certain terms that Tori was the one that shot her in the leg allegedly now from the moment that that happened and to, from in my opinion Megan's subsequent actions have always led me to believe that that story wasn't true that if not she was lying she was maybe exaggerating parts of it in order to paint Tori in a bad light because of whatever they might have gone through privately which you know it is what it is it's their business but whatever story that she painted out this narrative that she is an unprotected black woman that was subjected to some kind of level of violence from a black man is just not correct I've never believed it from the beginning and mostly because of her own actions because she came out pretty soon after the alleged shooting and was out and about gallivanting going to going to clubs doing walkthroughs um dancing twerking and just acting like somebody that hadn't necessarily gone through a very traumatic incident that would maybe want you to kind of remain and keep your counsel you know keep your head under keep your head under under the radar and sort of collect your thoughts understand what's going on the only thing that we saw kind of positive in her life that sort of made us look that she was making some sort of change was her kind of cutting off a few friends but then once you started looking at those details closely at the friends that she was cutting off it looked like she was cutting off the friends that maybe would have been the ones who maybe pushed back and maybe questioned her on some of the things that she was doing or called her out on her name bloody blah, blah 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 it just didn't look that right right the situation regarding it and then of course you have people out there who for some reason i think mal from the joe Biden podcast being a big proponent of it saying that oh tori needs to come out and speak on instagram live about the entire incident put it out there in the open and say your side if you didn't do it go and speak and it's like how can you say that somebody how is that good advice right when we are out there being berating our rappers for posing on instagram with stacks of cash and doing the money phone uh, brandishing guns and talking about all the crimes that they've done we took we say and look at that and say those guys are being stupid they're being irresponsible they shouldn't do that because they're making it easy for the police this guy has an open case regarding this issue so forgive him for not going out on instagram live and talking about an open case that he's um that that has his life basically on the balance right you saw the case the charges he's, he's looking at 22 years if he's found guilty in court this is real real shit right especially if if it's if it's proven that he actually did it right his career is completely done you know what that kind of stuff can do to somebody's career especially considering that the joe Biden podcast is essentially created by joe Biden, who throughout his entire career has had many allegations uh put against him some false some with some um level of um truth towards them they should know more than anything how damaging allegations like that can be towards you so he should take he should take whatever experience and whatever bad lessons that he can oh yeah he should, he, should, he should take whatever the wrongs the pride generation like a joe Biden have done in their in their time and kind of apply it to his story and make sure he doesn't repeat those same mistakes and he hasn't but of course he kind of um finally decided to break his silence and speak about some of the things and some of the things that he divulged in this story are really really crazy and they definitely make um for good conversation starters because i feel like there's a lot of things that people don't want to talk about especially within the black hip-hop community especially in america right it's things that people just don't want to say and mention especially the mention of rock nation the fact that he mentioned rock nation tried to strong arm him into not making a reply they directly called him and said hey make sure you don't say certain things for the best and better of your career which again paints jay-z and what rock nation do in a bad light it only goes to prove that they have an un they have an un tethered level of influence in the game that really needs to be kind of addressed and spoken about in the open um you look at some of the questionable stuff that they've done behind the scenes the fact that they have what was it their ceo is basically a federal informant right she took down a bunch of cartels and then you got they got people on their label that are screaming out no snitching and you're essentially led by a snitch some really weird and dubious things going on there the split between damon and jay-z when you look at some of the details makes jay-z look a bit terrible some really bad things going on at rock nation but again 
I totally laid it, put it all out there and basically laid it bare for us to basically make our judgment. And so far from what I've heard and how he's moving again, from how he's moving and what I've heard, this doesn't look like somebody as guilty. It definitely looks like somebody who thinks they have the benefit of facts and truth on their side. So again, if this story is proven to be right, Tory Lanez's account, and for all the people who have come out there smutting his name, saying mad things, essentially believing Megan without any burden of proof, just because she was crying on Instagram Live, I'm going to be interested to see what they do next in terms of their apologies, because this is a ridiculous story. So let's look at some of the clips. This is uploaded from Shade Room, uploaded a bunch of the clips, which is interesting too on Shade Room's side, right? Shade Room never uploaded Tory Lanez's tweet announcing he's going to go on Instagram Live, but they then put up the clips of him talking about the incident which again shows isn't it? they never post anything bad about her on their platform i don't think for the most part but they love to say things about about you know the the disparaging coverage when it comes to hip-hop in terms of the things that people do bad in that industry is really really bizarre it's, even in the uk it's really odd people love to say that you know the media and the government are against them but then when people within their own community do things that are a bit questionable they're aligned they're aligned with people who have done some very dubious things some very suspect things you look at some of the stuff that's happened with skepta and some of his friends two of which are in prison for some heinous crimes one of which was irresponsible one of which was essentially you know a, a convicted rapist and no questions no kind of um you know follow-up on that regard has been made you look at stuff that's happened of course in the u.s with this Tory lens incident and the fact that all these people are going out on the limb and you know basically saying that one account of the story is true and the other one isn't when they weren't necessarily there it's all a madness all a palaver but let's dig in on the clips uploaded via shayru and hear what Tory lens has to say directly when this whole uh, debacle or whatever you call it um, came about, the whole time it's like she knows what happened, I know what happened, and we know that what you're saying and what the alleged things and the alleged accusations of my name is are not true. It's falsified information, it's false information, and it's not accurate information. I don't ever want to come off like I'm here to bash this girl or I'm here to talk down about this girl or ever be at a place where like I'm, I'm disrespecting her because... To me, as a person, she's still my friend. No matter what, even if she doesn't look at me like that, I look at her like she's still my friend. And in the times that we were together or around each other, we've had nothing but joyous moments and good moments. So I, I'm not gonna sit here and bash her, but at the same time, it's, it comes to a certain standpoint of me as a person where it's like, yo, do y'all want me to just sit here and just allow my name to be assassinated, my character to be assassinated, everything that I worked for to get here to just be assassinated for something that I did not do? something that the events that are when and i don't and again i don't understand how this guy has the ability to still say him and megan are friends considering what's on the line and considering what he's been accused of he's a much better man than i am if somebody accused me of something like this and i know i didn't do it and they know i didn't do it i would be flipping the switch i would be ranting and raving saying all kind of nonsense throwing all kind of expletives at the person wanting to you know lay wanting to cause bodily harm to them do whatever it can be because you know how serious these allegations are especially for men men get these sort of allegations considering um, when relating to women including when it relates to violence they are career ending right just the just the smart alone like chris brown is a good example right because everyone always brings up his name but he's pretty successful now and he's been able to carve his own lane and essentially double down on his fans and he's maybe matured a little bit more but you know he apologized a million times rihanna has come out numerous times and said she she forgives him private she forgives him herself they've moved on from that period i think she even put a recent interview up about they're now friends and she knows his kids she's hanging around him and his family they have essentially moved on from that situation, right? They're more than okay with it. But there's still radio stations now, until this day, that still won't play Chris Brown. I'm sure that incident has still affected his ability to make money and progress in his career. Now, thank, obviously, himself that he's been able to put himself in a position financially and business-wise that he doesn't need kind of, you know, radio cosigns and industry cosigns. But I'm sure that's affected him negatively, even though the person that he did it to has accepted his, his apology and moved on from the situation, regardless um, of how heinous and disgusting that incident was. The people involved in it have sought peace and forgiveness so imagine imagine an incident where it, where like this where megan Stanley is going out on the limb and saying no you did this to me maliciously i don't know you we were never together you're making this up in your head you're delusional you're crazy protect black women like i would be going nuts i'll be going nuts so he's a much much better guy than i am honestly much much better guy than i am so let's continue let's see what, what, what else you have to say here da, 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 da. 
And of course, like clockwork, whenever this is the inter, this is the world, the inter, the thing, the funny thing about Megan that really is going to make people rub, rub up the wrong way about her. She had a lot to say about this incident, which is fair because it happened to you, right? So she had her thing to say, which I'm, which I've always been an advocate for. If something happened to you, especially if you're a public figure, I understand the tendency to go on social and kind of talk about it. Personally, if it was me, I wouldn't. I would want to deal with it, you know, privately or get the authorities involved. But it's not necessarily I want to want to play out in the public. Now, these people are different levels of celebrity. There's different money on the line. They've got whole conglomerates behind them. I get it. Cool. She addressed it from her point of view. And that's her story. That's fair. But it's okay for to but then it's not okay for Tori to mention it if, if he's rhyming it in a song. What's the difference? What's the difference of her getting up on Instagram and crying about an incident that she thinks happened to her and Tory Lane's giving his account of what he thinks happened via a beat? It makes there's no level of it's not like one person's taking it more seriously than the other. One decides to go through music, one decides to go throughout music. But it seems like whenever Tory has to say something, the internet erupts into like, how dare he say something about the incident? But it happened to him. He was the one in the car too. This situation affects himself, um, his personal life, his career, his family members. He has every right to talk about it just as much as Megan has the right to talk about it and say on oh, this comment, this nigga is generally crazy, which is mad considering that they were both in the car. You said what you said. He said what you said. Again, this is what's going to really hurt her in the long run because i think let's say this is a Jussie smollett incident where she just made up the incident just to gain sympathy because she thought it was going to help her album sales let's imagine that's true and she completely lied let's say that's true let's say she would be okay if she was if she didn't do all this other stuff these little snide remarks you know basically trying to bury him and make it look like you know that they don't didn't, like she's acting as if they weren't ever friends how she's basically treating Tori, which is fine let's imagine she she doesn't think they were friends this is inevitably going to end up hurting her more when the if if the story does come out that Tory is innocent and he didn't shoot her and her account of the story of what happened wasn't true because people are going to look at it and think oh you were being malicious you were purposely trying to bury this guy's career when you know full world that didn't happen because if she didn't say all these kind of things she could easily paint the narrative that oh i'm still stressed oh i've still got ptsd from this incident happened to me oh i'm still suffering from the loss of my mom at such a young age a formative time in her career which is de definitely something that she's definitely dealing with maybe in public um, which people don't understand but she could have easily spun this story in her favor if she just didn't include these other comments these comments are really going to be the ones that end up hurting in the long run this is again just my opinion it continues another video here <clears throat> he's this guy who uh, uh doesn't protect black women and he's this guy who but it's like he, he's this guy who doesn't care about black women that's what the narrative is now switched into and certain things like that and it's like hold on i need y'all to really back this up when have i not showed out for black women every single one of my videos the lead girl is black from say it to love to, to now like when when have i not showed love to black women I made I made five chicks tapes about about black love, about a black relationship, about a ghetto relationship at that. Like, you feel me? Like, when did I become this person? Like, my favorite song on the last chicks tape that I put out was Beauty in the Benz. And that was a record that with Snoop Dogg that I loved. And instead of me even being inside of the video, like, like really take me in for a second. Instead of me even being in the video, and this is before all this, instead of me being being in the video. I made the video all about the empowerment of black women. There's nothing but different types of black women in the video. I'm the bad guy. And it's like, yo, I, I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I, I understand like, and I support the whole movement of, of protecting black women, but I want to speak on something. And sometimes, you know, I know I'm not always in the right place to speak on things, but this is something that I went through. And so I feel like I'm able to speak on it. I am all for protecting black women. That is something that is the most one of the most important things that needs to be taken serious and awareness needs to be brought to. And regardless, if this debacle, regardless of what you guys think happened, if this situation caused you guys to pay more attention and more awareness to protecting black women, then I'm fine that I had to be dragged through the dirt for that. But I want y'all to understand something. Okay, let's go to the next one. That black, uh, protecting black women doesn't mean to protect black men. That, that doesn't make sense. Preach it. And that's a, one of the most confusing things happening now in culture, right? It's even, um, you can see the example happening now with COVID. COVID, you would have thought would have been an opportunity for all parts, you know, for everyone in humanity, for all parts of the population, for everyone under the sun to maybe collectively kind of band around each other, support each other because COVID was a definite indicator and proof of just how far 
away, a, just a, a detach the kind of, the, yeah, how big the gap was between the haves and the have-nots. You would have thought COVID would have been a great opportunity for people to be like, you know what, let's put our differences aside and understand that poor black and poor white is just poor. It doesn't matter. We're all in the shit together. Let's work together in order to make a better future for ourselves and our family and our children. That's what COVID should have done. But no, the narrative of COVID has been spun. <clears throat> we now have different, you know, races fighting against each other, infighting within the races, political fighting, nonsense going on that's distracting us from the actual um, issues at hand that are affecting us going forward that are probably going to affect us post-COVID anyway. And it's the same that's happening here with black culture. We've had this weird narrative going on where people are rabbiting this common Malcolm X um, line <clears throat> where he says black women are the most unprotected species in the world, right? Or protected, unprotected women. I've done a, you know, paraphrase that quote. But you have to look at the context of the time that Malcolm X said that statement. I'm sure there were things that were happening during that time that would have made that statement a bit more relevant and permeant to what was going on. Fast forward to the modern era to suggest that black women are the only people, the only women that are kind of um, disrespected in the world is completely bizarre. And it also it also kind of immediately um, kind of puts light and basically emphasis on the fact that what are you then saying? Are you then saying that black men aren't protecting black women? Are you then saying all men don't protect black women as if there's robes? There's kind of hordes of men um, walking down the street looking for black women to abuse and mistreat and disrespect. That obviously isn't the case. There are occasions where, of course, black women are maybe slighted in some respects, but everybody in any kind of uh, minority group is going to get slighted, especially when the chips aren't in their favor. But how can we um, how can we kind of fight that and counteract it? By coming together, not by tearing each other down. You would hope so. But again, we live in a divided world, so I shouldn't be that surprised. Next screen. Amen. It's black men. And I'm not saying that black men aren't the people who, in, in, in times who aren't the people who uh, inflict certain issues and, and mental issues and certain things that girls go through. Like, black men are, are, are very much the cause of a lot of things that, 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 that women go through. Because of, at the end of the day, like the way we were raised, certain standpoints, maybe we didn't have a parent around, some things, some, some, some things were just not here to, whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, it's like you gotta remember at the standpoint, if, 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 the man is supposed to be, and I say this loosely because I don't want anybody to take this out of context. If the man is supposed to be the, the head and a woman is supposed to be the neck, y'all got to think about this. In order for the head to move, in order for the head to move left, right, whatever it is doing, it needs the guidance of the neck. It needs oh, he's spitting now, bro. He's spitting. It needs the guidance of the woman. In, in order for me to smell and use my five senses on my face, for me to lean in or whatever the case is, I still need to. I still need to use the neck. I still need to. He's going in, man. I don't feel like I should be torn down. If anything, before y'all know the story, like learn the story first, learn the factual parts of the story first, and then come at me and be like, "Yo, you need to fix this and fix that." If that's what you feel like I did, but instead I'm being torn down for a narrative that's like, now I'm the poster boy for I don't like black women. But anyways, let's get into this. I want to get into this because. It so let's continue. Another part of the story was this one. Let's continue on, and we'll come. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a go. Here's a go that you're in a car with a person and this person is arguing with you. This person has gotten you to a place of like, yo, I don't even wanna be around you. Like I'm above this, I'm out of here. You get out of the car because the heated argument is so heated. And then this person gets out and shoots you in both of your feet and you jump back in the car. That's the part of the story that never made sense to me. Now, arguments happen, things happen, things get out of control. But in this current climate, considering what's at stake, considering Megan's level of intelligence, considering where she's been raised, considering what's going on in the world, blah, de, blah, 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 it would be very, um, it doesn't make any sense that somebody like her would go through an incident like that and then jump in the car with a person that inflicted that kind of damage into them. Just doesn't make any sense. Now, that goes away from just the comment of just, you know, this idea that you can get shot in both feet and it not hit any bones or tendons and you're perfectly fine. That's obviously an insane comment to make. But the actual idea that she got shot, um, you know, as a result of a heated argument and then went back in the car with that person with a heated argument with her is just insane. Why, why would you jump back in the car with a dangerous man who just did a dangerous crime to you, who did this criminal intent to you, and all this, all this, wh why? Why are you, why would you jump back in the car? Well, yo, then the police pull us over, and I see, you know what I'm saying, I, I'm, we're, we're all black in the car, there's a gun in the car, so I don't even want to, I don't even want to be, like, you know what I'm saying, I don't want nobody to get in more trouble, and I'm trying to protect this man. I'm trying to protect this man because at the end of the day, it's niggas getting shot out here. She then throws the black card at me. 
I'm trying to protect this black man. My love, nobody ever reported that you got shot but you. So why are you, how are you trying to protect me? Exactly. Tell me. I continue. And they continue here. And then, oh, I guess what did they, what did they put there actually? Uh, da, 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 da. Look at look at Shade Room putting up the, other the screenshot. See the sign of hospital records confirm Megan Salian was telling the truth about being shot. Mm, that's dubious though, right? That's dubious. We don't actually know if that's actually true. Um, again, what's the definition of being shot? Rick, I'm not sure if the actual definition of having ricochets hit you is being shot. If being shot, if be, if getting an injury in the as a kind of, you know, if, imagine somebody shoots at a window and then you step on the piece of glass, whether or not they kind of recognize that as you get in a shooting injury because it's as a result of somebody shooting a window. I'm not sure what the laws are on that, but again, a, a headline from a gossip blog doesn't prove that that actually happened. We continue. Like, this hurts, bro. Seeing my friends, people that I had on quarantine radio be people that were just like, 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 my real like at least people i thought were my friends like people i thought were like cool people like you know what i'm saying and it's like yo everybody just shunned me i showed everybody love at the top of the year everybody was on quarantine radio he he ha 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 and the second y'all have an accusation not even evidence come bash me I and i guess that's the most helpful thing that i've kind of that i can understand his point of view because obviously um I guess I've kind of gone through a similar sort of thing in a really minute way, right? By being a very popular promoter at the time during the whole, you know, um, uh, glory years of the East London hipster, Dawson Hackney promoting scene, right? I was kind of one of the people that was, uh, you know, at the forefront of that, I'd like to say. I, I was doing my bits and pieces along with other people too. I wasn't doing that on my own, for sure. But when that started to wane and of course you know as a natural process the the newer kids started to come up and the older people like myself had to get put to one side you could definitely feel it you could it's definitely understandable to feel a little bit like shunned that you did all these things for people and they didn't they paid it back like a small example the amount of people that i kind of booked to play and again i'm a big proponent of that I'm a really big believer in paying your friends. If you have your friend that's a creative, that's a graphic designer, a florist, uh, a, a you know, a pattern cutter, whatever, a tailor, right? I'm a big believer in getting your friends to help you out, but actually paying them for their work. I don't believe this idea of like, oh, because you have a friend that happens to be able to, you know, um, tailor a pair of jeans, that you're just going to use them to do your stuff and not pay them because they're your friend. If anything, you have access to somebody who's going to give a, sh a lot, a bit more of a shit, take more care at doing the work but you should do still compensate them for your time because i in my opinion in my experience it usually solidifies the friendship to a whole other level now again in my experience it didn't work out that way because i booked so many people to play at some of my club nights and i could tell you the times it was reciprocated or well, maybe i can count them on one hand the times that the person who i booked again it's not something i'm doing expecting something to come back to me but just the idea that I would go out my way to pay my friends, who I know for sure when they play for other people, they're not getting paid. They're usually doing it for the look. But I'd go out my way to make sure I'm giving them cash for them to have in their hands after helping them me out to play a set somewhere, maybe even sometimes overpaying them for their set they're playing. And if it had that not to be uh, paid back some way, it can definitely hurt. But I think, unfortunately, you have to get to a stage where you, you kind of, especially with maturity, you start to understand that no, you don't. people don't owe you shit. You're just, you're kind of, in this world and what your basically purpose is and what you're meant to be doing on your side of things just providing as much love putting out as much good energy as you can and then just leaving it out there and just hoping that whatever you're doing is probably putting people in a good footing but not expecting anything back in that regard from them directly you might get other things back coming back your way from the universe kind of telling you hey you're going on the right path but expecting people to kind of um have that kind of cordial respect where in tori's case where cool this thing happened to me, but you guys are my friends. If anything, you have access to me. You can call me right up and say, hey, this thing is fucked up, man. Do you do it? And then you can kind of decide off of the strength of that conversation whether or not you did believe me or not. But to run straight on Instagram, to run straight on social media and basically say, I'm going to take him off my album. I hate this guy fucking blah, 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 blah. That definitely is going to hurt, especially when you consider what he's probably feels like he's done for these people behind the scenes, how he felt that he felt the level of what their friendship was, especially during the beginning of COVID when everyone was at home and they were all playing basketball and shit. It felt like he was the guy that everyone was kind of, you know, the new kind of French Montana. Imagine something, it's like, it's like French Montana. I would, I would imagine if French Montana 
Montana, let's let's say for instance, right? Again, God forbid, touch wood. But if a story came out about French Montana allegedly doing something heinous to a woman, and all these women that he hangs around with in in the celebrity world came out and said French Montana's cancelled, I'm sure he'd be heartbroken, right? That they didn't even have the courtesy to kind of call him up and ask him a question or DM him or whatever. They just went on straight on social and denounced him because they were afraid of their own position, which is essentially what it comes down to. But it is what it is, isn't it? It is the game. I'm somebody who just, I don't get a say, then I understand. Sometimes the way I move is unconventional, you know? And I, ca I came to a place where I was dealing with so much uh, just talk and heat and just people coming at me that I made music because I was like, this is how I can speak through what I gotta do. This is how I can, we get so mad about artists making songs about the same thing, money, chains, and cars. So when a comes out and says his true, passion puts his true heart his emotions his the, the pain that he's dealing with with his baby mother his, his like this and that's the thing i never understood as well the backlash about him deciding to talk about the incident for his music was bizarre so what he's not oh he's profiting from it everyone's profiting from everything do you think megan getting on social media and crying about this incident isn't her profiting on it of some way shape or form these people when they move when they walk outside when they speak when they like something they are inadvertently advertising and essentially putting money in their pocket in some way shape or form it is what it is it's the nature of the beast because you're a public figure so for him to decide to talk for his music wasn't necessarily surprising for me a lot of uh, artists are sort of like Aspergian that way where they're not necessarily the best at talking and articulating themselves right in the one-on-one -on -one interview or even during via like an Instagram live but they're probably in a far better place to explain their story through music we've seen it countless times over the years isn't it? it is a standard thing I never really got the backlash for that next one when a person doesn't impose his emotion to the tape or what he wrong i'm wrong i get shunned off they took me off of every single playlist they took me off of every playlist they didn't want my story to come out they didn't allow my story to come out because it, it came off insensitive i came off insensitive to people now now, now i want to speak on this i don't ever want anybody to ever think that i've been insensitive to brianna taylor i marched nine days straight in miami for her and george floyd I would never, bro, I've mourned this woman as well. And everyone said, listen, we're mourning a black woman today. And you dropped an album? How dare the disrespect? Guys, let's bring this back. That day that I dropped that album, my mom, that was her birthday. And that was also the day she died. So I was also mourning a black woman. My mother, that meant a lot to me. My how bad do you feel now, eh? How bad do you feel now? My name is Daystar. I'm her youngest son. That meant a lot to me. And all I was doing was giving a truthful album about what I'm going through. And I thought that people were loud. When Next one. ...be able to hear it and feel me. But they didn't do that. And I don't expect, you know, everyone to just jump into my side. Because at the end of the day, I didn't deserve that for the way that I handled this. There's been insensitive things that I've done I apologize for as far as me not talking to y'all, addressing y'all, coming to y'all sooner and saying, yo, bro, I ain't do this, my... But y'all got to understand the reason why I wasn't able to do that, once they made this an actual thing, I immediately called the lawyer and was just like, yo, uh, uh, what can I do here? Because there's times I was like, I'm going to just say the whole story right now. They need to know. No, you're not allowed to talk. I will handle that for you in the court of law. So at that point, it gets to a standpoint where it's like, you know, my bad, my bad. That's the side I really find bizarre, and especially I think that might be it for it for most of the videos. I think there's nothing else to kind of go through. Um, but that's essentially what he's basically saying. Um, and I guess the that's the thing that I never really understood, I never really got. Everyone talks about these dumb rappers going online and being braggadocious and getting themselves in trouble and talking about cases that are open and talking about issues that they probably shouldn't be talking about on social and then the one time somebody maybe um you know uh listens to the advice of their represent lawyer right or you know person's gonna represent them in court suddenly that's a bad thing and they should kind of go against what their lawyer says and give you the news directly via instagram it's just such a bizarre way to kind of look at things again who knows who's telling the truth megan could be telling the truth tori could be telling the truth the truth could be somewhere in the middle but I just find it bizarre that everyone's riding for one version of the story just because it fits a certain narrative that's going on in culture at the moment and everyone's sort of repeating this kind of flipping storybook phrase all the time about protecting all black women as if there are no other issues happening at the at the moment. It's very, very bizarre. Again, um, the court case is going to happen, what, sometime next month. So I guess we'll have some sort of level of conclusion to the story regardless. But I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you think Tori's still innocent? 
Do you think Tori is guilty? Do you think Megan is guilty? Do, um, who decide do you believe in this story? Um, do you think he, um, he was insensitive for even doing his Instagram live? I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below.